Hello, welcome back to section 7.3 of our nuclear chemistry notes. This is part 7.3, transmutations, and the aim for today is to describe the difference between natural and artificial transmutation. So transmutation is when the, atom, the uh, nucleus of one element changes into the nucleus of a different element. And we've been watching this over the last couple of days doing our nuclear equations. Um, it occurs when we have a beta, alpha, um, or a positron emission. And this can happen naturally um, by beta, alpha, and positron emission or artificially, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. So natural transmutation occurs because of an unstable neutron to proton ratio. So that's the belt of stability. When our atom is not on the belt of stability, it will be radioactive and it wants to become stable. So it will emit a particle that will bring it to a more stable state. It occurs on its own without any help, which is what makes it natural. And alpha, beta, and positron decay all are considered natural transmutations. Artificial transmutation is when we bombard the nucleus with high energy particles to bring about this change. So this doesn't occur on its own. This is when humans are doing this with a machine. And artificial transmutation can be seen in two different ways. It, you either collide a charged particle with a target nucleus, like protons or alpha particles, and they, this has to have enough energy to overcome the repulsive forces between positive particles. And the positive particles in the nucleus and positive particles colliding with the nucleus are the positive particles that have to be overcome. So they have to bombard with the um, with these particles until it overcomes that repulsive force. Scientists used uh, special machinery to do this called cyclotrons and synchrotrons, and they use magnetic fields or electrostatic fields to speed up the particles to go fast enough to make this happen. The second type of artificial transmutation is when you use a nucleus to collide into the neutron. You use a neutron to collide into the nucleus, and this is when what a nuclear reactor uses um, it provides the neutrons to cause um, this transmutation. The neutrons have no charge, so they're not repelled by the nucleus. There's no repulsive forces to overcome. Instead, it's captured by the strong force, which is the force that holds protons and neutrons in the nucleus. The difference between natural and artificial transmutation is that when you're looking at the equation, natural transmutation will just have one reactant and will have more than one product and in artificial transmutation you have more than one reactant so there's more than one substance on the left side of the equation when the reactants in artificial transmutation are the target nuclei and the fast moving particle that you're using to make the transmutation occur so our first example shows an alpha particle uh, plus an aluminum 27 and resulting in phosphorus 30 plus a neutron so here we have an example of an artificial transmutation where we have two particles on the left on the reactant side. So this alpha particle is being artificially collided with this aluminum in order to produce these two uh, products. Um, just to, you know, to clarify, nuclear fusion will involve hydrogen and helium because that's how that occurs in stars. Nuclear fission is when we have one larger atom splitting into two smaller substances plus additional subatomic particles. So fusion will be when we're joining um, hydrogens and heliums. And then natural transmutation is just describing alpha, beta, and positron decay. And artificial transmutation is describing when you have uh, artificially causing a reaction to occur by adding something in on the uh, reactant side of the equation. What type of reaction is shown here? Okay, so we have uh, just one reactant and two products. So this would be natural transmutation. And what particle is missing? Okay, so remember we have to have both sides balanced. So we have 234 over 90. Here's 234 over 91. So how could we get this to balance? We would need a negative one and our mass is the same. So this would be our beta particle. So we're missing a beta particle, which you can describe either with the beta with the minus sign or with the electron symbol. 
And now this reaction, what do we have? All right, so we have two reactants. Once we see two reactants, we know this is artificial transmutation. And what's missing? So let's figure out what we have to add on this side in order to get our products. So we have six and four is 10, and three and two is five. So we would need a one and a one, which means what particle has a mass of one and a charge of one? This would be a proton. So if a proton is bombarded with the beryllium nine, we would end up with lithium six and helium four. And that concludes today's notes. See you next time.